Gambir Station This station is located in central Jakarta. The name Gambir is taken from the name of a Dutch lieutenant of French descent named Gambir. Wealth of Dance Station underwent a name change in 1937 to Batavia Konisplein Station. At that time, Gambir Station was already the busiest station in the Dutch East Indies. All long distance trains and those heading to Bogor stop at this station. The station's name was later changed to Gambir Station in 1950. The station did not change its form after Indonesian independence until the mid-1980s. Gambir Station is a large station with Type A class that serves long-distance train customers. The station also serves executive class and a few mixed-class trains that go to major cities in Java. Gambir Station has a distinctive feature in the form of a bell sounding the instrumental song of Kicir Kicir, which is often played at every arrival of long and medium distance passenger trains. As soon as the siren sign of the train is about to leave, the porters line up beside the train. As the train starts running, the porters greet by placing their right hand on their left chest. The respectful attitude of the train porters at Gamber Station is done as an expression of gratitude to the passengers. Now, we will take you for a walk to one of Indonesia's iconic buildings in the capital city Jakarta, namely the Monas Monument. To be precise, it's located right in the middle of Medan Merdeka Square, central Jakarta. The construction of the monas aims to commemorate the preserver, the struggle of the Indonesian nation. For those who want to visit this monument, you can come from Tuesday until Sunday. The activities that can be done at Monas are educational tours, great travel, culinary tours, sports, and binoculars to see the city of Jakarta more closely so you won't get bored from just looking at Monas. Next destination is the National Gallery of Indonesia. The establishment of this National Gallery is one of the efforts to build the National Art House or National Cultural Development Center, which was initiated in the 1960s. The National Gallery of Indonesia stores, collects, and exhibits works of fine arts such as paintings, sketches, graphics, sculpture, ceramics, photography, crafts, and installation art. And recently, this gallery has around 1,785 collections of works by Indonesia and international artists. The scope of the National Gallery's activities, namely carrying out exhibitions, preservations, seminars, discussions, workshops, performance art, film or video screenings, festivals, competitions, and many other activities. Visitors can view the collection of works in permanent exhibition building on the second floor. It's available from Tuesday until Sunday for free. to the National Library of Indonesia. This library is a non ministers government agency that performs governmental duties on the subject of libraries that serve as building, reverence, research, preservation, and library networking centers. This library is situated in the state capital that also close to the National Monument. On September 2017, President Joko Widodo inaugurated the new Municipal Services Building that is the world's highest national library 
with 27 floors. The library has become not only a book collection center, but also other facilities such as theaters, audiovisual services, data centers, rare book collection services, and beside the Indonesian of Sciences. The National Library's ancient collection is one of UNESCO's memories of Lagaligo and Syntax, Babat Dipunogoro, and National Books. Visitors can go to the top floor which caters to the Nusantara cultural collections. Besides reading the books, you can also see Jakarta from a high altitude here. After the National Library, we will travel to the National Museum or what is often called the Eleven Museum. which is located precisely at Jalan Merdeka Barat 12, Central Jakarta. This museum is the first and the largest museum in Southeast Asia. In this national museum, we can see collections of historical items such as prehistory, archaeology of Hindu and Buddhist times, numismatics and heraldry, ceramics, ethnography, geography, and history. Last but not least, we are visiting the Istiqlal National Mosque that the largest mosque in Southeast Asia and the sixth largest mosque in the world in terms of capacity. This mosque was built to commemorate Indonesian independence. This mosque is named Istiqlal, the Arabic word for independence. On December 1954, the Istiqlal Mosque Foundation was founded to realize the idea of building a national mosque. President Sukarno decided to build on the land of the former Dutch fort because across from it, a cathedral church has been established. So, he decided to show how harmonious the religious life in Indonesia was. Unfortunately, construction of this mosque did not go smoothly. It takes 17 years until the Istiqlal was completed and the mosque was opened to the public on February 1978.